Hey, I'm Mark Kachak, and I'm watching Kendall Talks. Preview. Goes D minor to A to F. What's up, guys? It's your host, Kendall Tucker, and today's special guest I'm excited about. I'm a fan of his. He's an extremely talented actor. You may recognize him in the HBO series The Outsider as Jack Hoskins or one of my personal favorites, Russ Langmore, on the hit Netflix series Ozark. Today we got Mark Minshaka with us. How's it going, brother? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Can't complain. You're currently over in the UK right now. What's it like over there with this whole COVID-19 stuff going on? Uh, Ma'am? We're out in the countryside, so it's pretty. It's been pretty chill. Um, I mean, I go to th- I go to the farm shop, get groceries every. You know, I, I go a couple times a week, and they're adhering to all the you know all the rules and whatnot. But uh, other than that, we see the guys who deliver packages and uh, guys who come to mow the yard. Yeah. That's about it, so. That's good. Are they are they pretty strict on lockdown over there right now? Yeah, there's not. I mean, just like grocery stores, pharmacists. Mm. Uh, I heard a pub was open today. Oh yeah. I'm not sure. I didn't. I I didn't witness it, but I was told that there was a pub open today. But otherwise, yeah. But it's funny. I was on. Uh, I was on the phone with somebody from Sweden earlier. Mm-hmm. And they're they didn't close they didn't shut anything down over there. Oh wow, really? Yeah. Wow, that's surprising. I thought pretty much everywhere was the same. Yeah, they uh, they they didn't they didn't do anything. So hmm. anyway. Well, let's jump into it. Um, what or who inspired you to be an actor, and how did you get your start in the industry? Uh, man, I. I think it was from watching movies when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dead Poets Society was a big, mm-hmm. kind of a big influence for me. And um, and then I just kind of, I always kind of liked uh, being, I, I don't want to say class clown, but like, I liked to entertain when I was a kid. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, movies. I, 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 I somehow at some point in my life, I, I was like, I want to do whatever that thing, whatever this movie is making me feel. I want to do that. Mm. Gotcha. <laughs> so you knew pretty much your whole life you wanted to be an actor, or was it a point in your life where you're like, I'm gonna go and give this thing a try? No, really. I mean, it's like when I was in college, I kind of. Um, I just I couldn't get it off my mind and decided to yeah. give it a go and did a play and went to New York for a summer and came back and after I went to New York I kind of was I was uh, I was done I knew I knew that was what I was gonna do oh, once yeah. I was college you were hooked yeah that's cool man and it's, and it's worked out great for you too. So how how long were you pursuing an acting career until you finally found some kind of break and you're like, wow, this is this is a big this is a big look for me. Um, that's a tough question. Yeah. Because uh, there's several times you think you have breaks when you don't. Mm. Um, I mean, my first good job was uh, Generation Kill. Was back in 2007, and um, I'd started kind of I'd started dabbling in acting around 2000, and then uh, I mean at some point I moved to New York. Well, in two, 2003, I moved there, finished the school in 2005 in acting school, and then it was like. Two years after that, so but there, I really, I would say, you know, I would say a good uh, five, six years. So before the Generation Kill, did you have like, like some commercial gigs or little things before that project, or was that your very first project? Um, I, 
I think I had done some commercials. I'd done, I'd worked on this film, The Alamo, which was terrible. <laughs> uh, it was a big movie, but, um, and I'd worked on a couple of indie films. These, these were, those were in Texas. And then yeah, Generation Kill was the first thing I got when I got to New York, or my first good job in New York. Sweet, sweet. Now, I know you've been in quite a few uh, projects, a couple of them being really big ones, but I want to talk about my favorite, and that'd be Ozark. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I'll admit, I'm a little late to the party. I didn't start watching Ozark till this whole quarantine thing started, and y'all aired the first season in 2017, and right now, according to Netflix, it's in the top 10 things to watch, and that's awesome, you know, that it's gaining so many new followers being, you know, a few years later. Um people just now tuning into season one and loving it like myself. Um, How'd you land that role as Russ Langmore? Did you audition for it or were you asked or how'd that work? Uh, Yeah, I I auditioned for it. Um, It was, uh, I was, I was kind of, I was at a kind of a rough place. I'd been like, I think by the time Ozark started, I think I I was out of work for like nine months. I couldn't get a job for. Yeah. I was like I couldn't get arrested for a job. Um, and that just ended up being the you know right time, right place, um, and something that I really love, which is I've been pretty lucky uh, with that. Like most of my jobs I've, or jobs that I've been that I really wanted to do and wanted mm-hmm. to dig into. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, this, the casting director, Alexa Vogel is, she's been a, a just a, a, a big part of my, uh, career. Mm-hmm. Um, she did Generation Kill. She was the casting director on that. She's just, she's an amazing cast reader. She's done some incredible shows. She did The Wire. She did. Oh, wow. She does all of David Simon's stuff and um, does a lot of Ryan Murphy stuff. So, uh, yeah, when she gives me a chance to get in the room and um, get in front of the director and producer, it's um, I'm always grateful. Yeah, that's awesome. So when you auditioned, was it just in front of her or was it in front of, you know, the director and, and everyone else? No, it was just her. It oh, cool. For, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I went in for her and then heard back, I don't know, a week or so later. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, you had, well, there was a lot of talented actors on um, the set. Who did you have the most fun working with on set? Um, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of hard to 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 pick. I, uh, I mean, Chris Baker, he played my brother. We obviously spent a lot of time together, mm-hmm. um, and we got on really well. And we both play guitar, so we. We play guitar out like when we weren't working. Um, Julia was super fun to work with. Julia Garner. And, yeah, she's uh, awesome. Uh, and she, yeah, she's a tough cookie. I mean, yeah. I mean that in like, I mean that in the, in the best way. Like, yeah, she won't. She, she, you, you cannot walk over that girl in a scene. She gives, she gives a lot back to you. And, and that's Charlie why Tahan. she that's why she plays her role so well, huh? Yeah. And Charlie Tahan, who played my son, was uh he was just uh he was he was he was wonderful. Yeah, that's awesome, man. A lot of talented actors. Um now let's talk about your And then of course uh, Jason Butler Harner too. Oh well yeah. As, who I who played the FBI agent. Like I had a blast working with him and made an incredible friendship with him it's kind of hard to pick who was my they were all they all have their their part yeah yeah so your character russ he he has two different lives in a way being he's in the closet about his sexuality 
when you took the role, did you know this about your character? And what was your thought of playing this person? Uh, I did not. No. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't, I, I found out, uh, right before it was, well, when was it? I think it was, it was the episode before I go back to his hotel. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was probably like episode four or so. Somebody said something to me. Uh, and I was like, oh, because I, I hadn't read the next script. Yeah. And I was like, all right. Uh, but I was, I had never, I'd never played that before. So I was super excited. And um, yeah, it's just, you don't, you don't get that chance every day. Yeah. Uh, it was something. And, and the, the character just had a lot of layers, regardless of, you know, regardless of what his, um, sexual preference was there was a lot going on so uh yeah that role was that role was really diverse or was the was the least of my worries yeah well you know that that role was a very it it, you got to show a lot of your your talent just in that one role that one character because there's so many different parts of rust that was pretty cool how you know he has two or three different parts about him. Um, you got the loving side, the hardcore side, and then the, the secret side about, you know, being in the closet and stuff. So that was really cool how you, you played all those parts and you played it very well. Thanks, man. I yeah, definitely. Um, you know, personally, I feel like they should have kept your character around a little longer. I feel like they could have done a lot more with Russ. Did you, did they tell you how many episodes you'd be in, or were you shocked by the news of the show killing your character off? I think it was it was a, during episode five, and he called, and he was uh, he was he was very apologetic, and he he was like, I realized I hadn't told you everything, and was thinking about you last night. So it was they don't have to do that, which it was very generous of them to to call and let me know. Um, he was like, we're trying to figure out something else to do, but uh, he was like, this is what it was from the beginning, and we didn't know who was playing these parts, and you guys have come in, and now we wish we weren't doing this. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Had to happen, so. Yeah. Um, have, you, have you watched, I mean, have you watched season three at all? Have not seen season three. I can't wait. Um, cause I, I mean, I love everybody that's on the show and I, I heard Tom Pelfrey's really great in it this season too. Oh yeah. He did. He did a phenomenal job. Yeah. It was really, it was a really good season. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend for those watching this that haven't watched it, watch from start of season one, obviously, and watch through it. It's a great, it's a great uh, show. Um, now, you know, we all seen a short clip in the show of you singing and playing guitar, which happened to go pretty much viral. I didn't realize how good you really were. till I seen some stuff on YouTube. I seen Gibson just did an interview with you. How long you've been playing the guitar for? Uh, too long to suck as bad as I do. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Um, I, I don't know. I, I picked it up. Uh, I, I, I think I learned my first chords. Gosh, 20 years ago, maybe. Oh, yeah. And I've just always kind of just fiddled around with it. And I've never had taken lessons. I've just kind of learned on my own. But um, oh, nice. yeah, I enjoy it. I, I do love playing. Do you write your own music? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I finally, over the last couple of years, like started making myself learn some covers of songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that was like Ozark was 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 kind of during was during that period, mm-hmm. uh, second season when I had to learn um, the man who sold the world. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, but I I tried I, I write my own stuff and um, 
I usually, if I'm traveling, I usually go to an open mic and try it out and see, you know, just see what the response is. Well, that's cool, man. Yeah, you know, uh, the fans loved it. They loved your cover of that song. And is there any chance that you would want to chase a, a music career path as well and try to do that as well as acting? Or is it more of something that you just enjoy as a hobby? Uh, I don't, I, I think I just enjoy it as a hobby. Yeah. I, I haven't, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's fear that I don't, uh, that I haven't thought about doing it. I, I like playing out. I just don't, I never, that's never really been in, in the, in the big picture for me. So, mm -hmm. um, I haven't thought about it, but who knows? Stranger things have happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, all the good feedback you had from just that little bit of playing on Ozark, I mean, who knows? That might be your, uh, your opportunity right there to, you know, chase that a little bit more, too. Because, I mean, you sound great. You got a good, you got a unique voice to yourself, so. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, uh, definitely, man. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm hopefully going to get that song recorded. I've been trying to do it for a, a while uh had several people on twitter yell at me um but i but the, the truth the fact was i was i that happened and then i found, i went in and did recorded one i wasn't like there was just something i wasn't happy with about it and then uh, yeah and then i went like a year and a half kind of on the road working and I just didn't have any time to get into a studio. So i once this is up, once things get back to normal, I'm, uh, I have a studio that I'm going to do it at. And, uh, hopefully I'll at least get that done, get put yeah. out. Yeah. And I mean, it's not like you've missed the, the opportunity on doing the cover for that song because with this quarantine Ozark, I mean, everyone's, there's been a lot more people started from season one over. So it's, it's really fresh to a lot of new people. Yeah. So it's definitely, I would definitely recommend doing that, man. That'd be awesome. So, um, you know, last question before we wrap things up, I don't want to hold up, hold you up too long. What's some advice you could give someone wanting to pursue the acting? Uh, good training and write your own stuff. Just uh, you have to you have to kind of throw stuff out there, mm -hmm. and then something will stick. Uh, I mean, as far as writing and making your own, you know, making your own stuff, like you gotta. The first thing you do is probably gonna suck. Yeah. But you learn as you go, you know. Um, the first thing I wrote sucked, uh, and then you just. You got to keep doing it because um, as, as, that's basically it. And good training. I mean, for me, I like I, I, I studied for a couple of years at the William Asper studio and um, it was invaluable for me. Uh, some people don't have to. Some people just learn as they learn as they work. Um, but. I, it was it was something that I needed, and I'm glad I did. That's good, man. So just not give up and never stop learning, huh? Yeah. That's good, man. Well, you know, Mark, I appreciate you sitting down with me, brother. I look forward to doing this again with you in person in the near future when all this is over. And um, I look forward to seeing you on the big screen again. Cool. Thanks, man.